another episode of Silver Scream Queens. On this week's episode, we are covering Dead Alive, a.k.a. Brain Dead, from 1992, directed by Peter Jackson. Set in Wellington, New Zealand in the 1950s, the story at the heart of all the blood and guts is actually a sweet one. It's a love story between a timid guy named Lionel, Timothy Balm, and a feisty shop girl named Paquita, Diana Penelver. Things get complicated when Lionel's domineering mum gets bitten by a rare Sumatran rat monkey, becomes a zombie, and Lionel, trying to keep everything quiet, has to juggle the growing number of infected. The tagline of this movie is, some things won't stay down, even after they die. All right, witches, strap in, because if you haven't put this together yet, this movie is about to get spoiled. So get ready. Introducing Stephanie the Satanic. She'll sacrifice you for your insolence. Summon her and no hell's wrath. And in this corner, we have Blaine the Ball Buster. She has no mercy on these nuts. Take her to the Senate on your first date or make your maker. And coming out next. Emily the Impaler, your misogynistic chick will get the pointy stick. She cooks her meanies like she cooks her tofu weenies. I love us so much. I was literally eating tofu weenies yep. when we wrote yep. this. Yep. And that made me so fucking happy. God damn Two hot dogs. So have I ever talked to you guys about wrestling versus wrestling? No. <laughs> No, I'm so okay. excited. So we're a wrestling house. I consider wrestling what they do in the Olympics, like a true sport. Oh, yeah. Yes. And then wrestling is That's what my husband is obsessed. Yeah. Oh, WWE. Wrestling. Just like the beautiful Nacho Libre style theatrics. Can't and we just, just like... have a salad? Sorry. Wrestling, to me, feels a lot like everything that happened in this motherfucking movie. So first of all, Blaine, thank you. Oh, God. No, listen, I had never seen this movie before, so I apologize. And no. also, you're welcome. Yeah, no. It, um, Peter I Jackson. Would, please, God, don't eat first. No. Oh, I want while eating. No. Uh, <gasps> you would. You're fucking Creed. Oh, you can do it. Yeah, I am Creed. You can do it. Um, And honestly, this movie's budget was $3 million, and it grows. <laughs> Why? I know all the No, actually, parts. I'm so sorry, but it was four and a half million and it, it only needed, it only used three million. Somehow yeah. it came in under budget with all that goddamn blood. And, and actually, I have a fun fact there. The final scene to be filmed was the section in the park with Lionel and the zombie baby, Sylvan. <laughs> the movie was finished a week ahead of schedule with, four, with New Zealand $45,000 left. So Peter Jackson used all the budget on the park scene over two days, and he has gone on to say this was his favorite scene in the whole movie. I will say Schlockfest is the only appropriate criticism of this film. Oh my god. The film's name is even confusing, because we know it in America as Dead Alive, but it is called Brain Dead. So if you look it up under IMDb, and, and it's also misleading, because the cover art is actually really endearing. It, it is. It has, like, the beautiful font, and it has that, like kind of Hannibal Lecter looking close up and then this beautiful yeah. like dark contrast so other Peter Jet like Bad Taste which was his following film that cover depicts accurately what the fuck's going on so it's set in the 1950s but it also felt like a satire of the 1950s like a John Waters movie I think that this is a caricature I mean the whole movie is a cartoon yep. that's been weirdly put into live action and did not translate it's like you took a script for an okay movie and then translated it via Google Translate into like Cantonese and yeah. then translate it back to English and then gave it to a 12 year old who also had explosive diarrhea. <laughs> and then we're like, could you make this in your backyard? Yes. And they were like, okay. And then you get yes. the movie. I don't understand how this came from Peter Jackson considering everything that came after it. Because yeah. I was friends. like, I saw the cover of it and I was like, oh my God, like frighteners. Like it's going to be charming and like right. really fun and kitschy. And right. it was kitschy, but it was also fucking filthy like i i was not prepared for just the schlock like you said stephanie like the pure schlock of it all 
was just incredible. And while I tallied, I gagged with fear of vomiting six total times, which mm. feels low considering how disgusting this goddamn okay. movie was. It takes it so far and he pushes it that it becomes hilarious hit after hit after hit. <laughs> the movie that he made after this movie, fun fact, was Heavenly Creatures. And that's, <laughs> that's the movie he made the after man that this gave movie. us the Lord of the Rings. The first scene of this movie was filmed on quote unquote Skull Island, was actually filmed at the Putan, I'm gonna say this wrong, Putan Giruya Pinnacles, which is the same location used for the Path of the Dead in the film Return of the King. It's amazing. This movie is an hour and 37 minutes or an hour and 44 minutes, depending That's on the cut that you get. You guys are so lucky. I got the uncut yeah, version because, and it was an hour and 47 minutes. Yeah. It was an hour too long. Yeah. At least. <laughs> The movie that I want to see is the first six minutes. With all the shit we've covered coming out of New Zealand, I don't know if it's safe. I'm moving back. Well, no, and this is, this is what I told you guys a few movies back, where New Zealand has strong roots in horror, and Peter Jackson plays a healthy role in that. Not like just it. with this movie. He's a fucking genius. I mean, oh, yeah. regardless of how you feel about this movie, what he brought to it at the time in history was just incredible. This was, like, the bloodiest movie in history. It's known as the goriest film of all time. And this is a rumor that I've heard. I don't know it's true. It's just something that I've heard at like the Monster Mania con circuit that they had to actually like decimate the house that they were shooting this in because all of the fake blood soaked into the foundation. I'm sure that, that makes sense. Unstable. I don't know if that's true. It's one of those things that like you hear and I haven't been well, able to substantiate it, but it's interesting. Up. If true, that's hot. Right. So we open on Skull Island, yeah. which is apparently southwest of Sumatra in right. 1957. And we start on this like weird cavern, which I've heard. I'm going to use the word harken, so get ready to drink. Uh, <laughs> it's supposed to harken to like a vaginal canal because what? the end of the movie calls back to that, where like it begins with birth. So and much birth. vagina in this movie. Oh, but I do future. think that we're fucking reaching. I don't think there's any. I don't know, man. Pub. So we start with these two. Two white dudes. So fucking old Harry Potter, who's wearing like a Carol Baskin hat. He steals this cage, like this small, it was probably like what, like three feet by three feet cage. He like haunches it up on his shoulder and is somehow like out running the indigenous people of this island, yeah. which never would happen no. because they never land and he does not. It's like, I have a permit. I have a permit. They and give like a fuck about the permit. Faces. He immediately pulls out an assault weapon yes. and opens fire because he's trying to steal something from them. And then he like hoists it up onto this like some kind of willy jeep. Meanwhile, the guy who was like his escort who was trying to figure everything out like falls and hits his head on a rock and he's like, I'll give a fuck. I'm gonna leave you behind, which really shows mm -hmm. what kind of person he is. And they drive away and they're escaping with what you find out is a creature that he then immediately gets bitten by. So he fucking kicks him in the face off of the back of this Humvee thing. And then they start dismembering him because of the fear of whatever has bit him is like now infiltrating his body. And but yeah, I couldn't find a subtitled version of this, which was a complaint. So I had no idea what the fuck anyone was saying this whole time. But I will say this is the best part of the whole movie is after they decapitate him the blood splash goes cartoon and then you see dead alive in this beautiful font that that's the whole uh, movie it's can stop amazing watching it. they zoom off the team that has the monkey they zoom off and they trade the monkey to australians for cash we then see the monkey travel in an airplane and through the town via what we learn through behind the scenes photos is just a very tiny town with model trains and everything like that. And the monkey ends up in this small town um, where Paquita is working at a pharmacy. She's a goddamn snack. That's all I want to say. Oh, she's a snack. She should have saved herself time and just not dealt with any of these motherfuckers. Paquita is obsessing over this delivery man um, who comes by once a week to drop off God knows what. And she's like, oh, that's the man of my dreams. And um, this older lady who I just thought was a bruja, um, a rando, comes up behind her and is like, do you have desires? 
And so the Bruja and Paquita go in the back where her dad is. And um, the Bruja, like, reads her tarot. And basically she says, Paquita's knight is coming and he is an unfamiliar person. And just as the Bruja says that, uh, Lionel comes through the front door of the pharmacy. So they pull the the Knight of Swords, which when upright is ambition um, action oriented and driven to success and very fast thinking. And it's right. It, P.S. If you pull this card, it does not mean your soulmate is coming. Um, it all. depends on the context. I mean, obviously this Bruja knows what she's doing, so I'm not going to, to like rain on her reading, but also but, like she's, she's directed by Peter Jackson. So we also have to consider right. that he has no idea what the fuck he's talking about. Exactly. So I also, so when she sees the symbol of the tarot deck um, in front of her, I want take a moment and appreciate the fact that that means that the card was reversed for him. Paquita is so fucking annoyed because she's like I don't even know the fucking person I'm gonna fall in love with. I thought it was this goddamn delivery guy and now I gotta deal with this goon and he's like so clumsy and just fucking up the entire store and she's rolling her eyes the entire time and it's un- it's not until he goes to reach for some licorice after placing his order for his mother um, and the licorice falls into a symbol that she recognizes from uh, the tarot reading. And she's like, oh, my gosh, this is my knight. And from there, she is obsessed. And, like, Lionel, um, which is his name, he is uh, <laughs> fucking Lionel, immediately spooked for some reason because an attractive woman is, like, interested in him, which I never understood among men. He was standing on the opposite side of the counter. So in tarot, when you're reading a card, if it's reversed, it has a completely different meaning. So in this case, when the Knight of Swords is reversed, I'm going to read from Biddy Tarot, which is who I learned yes. how to read tarot from. So the Knight of Swords reversed can repeer, appear in a tarot reading when you are brimming with energy and motivation, but cannot efficiently channel and release this energy. You are growing restless and frustrated because you want to take action, but something is holding you back. Like your mother. Your mother. <laughs> yes perhaps the timing isn't right you don't have enough resources or you're relying on someone else like your mama who is not ready you need to find alternative ways to release this energy otherwise you're going to burst it can also suggest it. that you need to slow down and you are at risk of severe burnout and exhaustion it indicates that you need to go at it alone and build up valuable f- life experience and maturity you, <laughs> which you is what the kita needs to do <laughs> exactly and you search for freedom and independence it is likely that you will make mistakes due to your rec- reckless and impatient nature but it's a part of your journey so for him this card is reversed and i think that that is a a really great glimpse into what is to come for this character yes he stumbles out the door again and she like tries to follow him like no 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 you're my destiny so he places his order with paquita he goes back home i love how he legit almost gets 100 percent murdered by a tram and yep. um and then just delicately flops into said tram. If you had dealt your cards right, that could have been your chance to get out of this goddamn relationship. God, I mean, can you imagine just what would have not happened? We find that he lives in a beautiful home with his mother, who is a racist, overbearing old woman who is like high society, convoluted motherfucker. And she was just inducted into this like Hall of Fame bullshit because of that and she's about to have visitors the next day he is expected to clean up the entire property so he is out front and paquita comes by with the mother's order and vera the mother who's obsessed with lionel notices that paquita and lionel are flirting in the front yard and so she throws a fucking mommy dearest fit and like destroys her favorite face and Lionel hears this and he's just like, oh, I'll take that order and like runs back in and like, not the mom's the daffodils. Fucking... no, not the daffodils. <laughs> um, and she's a fucking bitch. Does anybody think this is kind of a Peter Jackson's B horror movie homage to Psycho? The moment he walks in the door, the mom is holding a giant fucking knife 
and she's yelling at him that there's a bug. I exclusively want to open mail which, with a butcher knife. Like, why was oh, she yeah. carrying that butcher knife around so much? What she is going on? Feeling very passionate. She was ready. So I think she is the Dorothy of this situation. Mm-hmm. Paquita comes and they have a conversation where she asks him to the zoo. And now I'm really, I'm really depressed because that sounds like a great idea that my first date with my husband was with oyster shots and a hand job. So, <laughs> I mean, honestly, that sounds like a much better idea. These motherfuckers go on a date to the zoo, which like fuck zoos. Yeah. yeah. Zoos are the worst. Lionel and Paquita are like wandering around flirting in the zoo they see a lion they wander around and they come to the monkeys and they are flirting they see the monkeys one of the monkeys throws an apple core at paquita paquita is like oh what a moment and she like picks up an apple the apple core and (laughs) throws it back at the monkeys the apple core ends up um in between the regular monkey cage and this cage of a fucking rat monkey, <laughs> a Sumatran <laughs> rat monkey. And so like the regular monkey goes, I, I would say it's like a spider monkey, um, goes and tries to grab the apple core and the rat monkey like not only takes the apple from that monkey, but also like takes the monkey (laughs) and and, like fucking annihilates that goddamn monkey and like Lionel and Paquita are like oh no nature (laughs) (laughs) and then we see this fucking rat monkey that's more rat than monkey and has these giant claws and then we see the handler come in and he's just like acting like everything's business as usual and he like starts banging on the cage of the rat monkey um and he like tries to pull out the remains of the other like the spider monkey but that's you know nil this claymation fucking monkey oh this, this first of all the music in the background is like curious george is happening in an orgy setting like a <laughs> I thought curious george so monkey on monkey eating, oh. I suppose, is like the first cannibalism. Do love the stop motion animation. I do. Oh, that's beautiful. That this is only 17 minutes into the film. <laughs> they went hard. They were like, not a minute to waste. We've got, oh, we've got oh. an hour and a half of this shit. Peter Jackson was like, I want to ass punch you. <laughs> multiple times fun fact um as we're introduced to the sumatran rat monkey in the scooby-doo mystery incorporated 2010 episode the secret serum Thelma's mom references the order of sumatran rat monkeys and in another one of peter jackson's films fleet frighteners um yes and in king kong they allude to sumatran rat monkey and um the same about- cage oh. is used yes. in king kong yeah yeah the zookeeper of the rat monkey comes over, takes the spider monkey out of the rat monkey's mouth, turns around to Paquita and Lionel and says, yeah, that's a Sumatran rat monkey. Uh, legend has it that um, the rats came off the slave ships and oh. raped the monkeys in the trees, oh, gee, thus producing nice. Sumatran rat monkeys. They're well, from that's... a specific island. Also, ugh, uh, slave ships yep. that's racism it's- and the rats that come off the slave ships are obviously looking to rape and pillage because they're from slave ships it is yep. very intense and very racist so yep. um i don't think it's a far cry to say that a lot of what we hear in this movie is embedded in that yep. Absolutely. Also, and- that's why like face tattoos are frowned upon a lot of times in white cultures because of the Maori culture. I had the privilege of living with Maori tribe for about three months when I was 16. And it's a beautiful culture and it's fucking bullshit that they are shoved into these tiny reservations throughout uh, the northern island of New Zealand. Go fuck well- yourself, colonizers. <laughs> you know, the only thing that will ruin a date at the zoo where a monkey has already been viciously murdered by another otter monkey is your mom there (laughs) watching you on said date. So mom is a sneaky little bee and she is just hanging out by the Sumatran rat monkey cage to watch Lionel and Paquita on their date. She's got the best shades on though. Oh, she is fierce. I I would wear that dress. (laughs) You know I'd wear that dress. 
and she gets bitten by Claymation Curious George. And she smushes the grape jelly monkey, the particularly bad special effect. I mean, it gets better. Oh, and it's just a taste of what's to come. Oh, it's Mm -hmm. nothing. Lionel comes over to her to help her. She's been bitten. At this point, they don't understand what that means. And she pushes Paquita, straight up pushes her out of the way. And Lionel leaves Paquita there. I wanted to knock his ass out. And he leaves her there to go with his mom because only mom can get that subpar dick. Why isn't there just like a little tiny scene of them fucking each other? Because that's exactly what this fucking relationship is. They go back to their crib. Mom is wounded and she's milking it for all it's worth. She's in bed. He's wrapping it up. She's blaming him for her drama. She's like, oh, um, you're cuddling up and doing this while I'm over here. And she's ex- Experienced and that whore and it's like she would not be talking about this person this way if Paquita was white and yep. I don't think we addressed up to this point Paquita's not white she yep. is Latinx he goes back to his room and Paquita is yelling his name all he can do when he fucking sees her is go shut up (laughs) and she's like um you forgot your jacket and he's like you couldn't wait till tomorrow don't bitch so she's like i still love you and she like crawls up the lattice while he checks in on his mom to make sure she's passed the fuck out because yeah she's still infected by a fucking monkey yeah (laughs) and he's like I'm no good to be around. I can't be with anybody. And she's like, cool, bye. And he's like, wait, let me kiss you. (laughs) So they kiss and then they fuck. Their entire romantic interaction was so forced and so gross. Like, I don't even think my first kiss looked like that. They're fucking mom's dying. Paquita's grandma's pulling all the fucking cards out. And then the flavor flave chain comes out and she's like, oh my God. (laughs) The next scene is the only time I genuinely had a real issue with my gag reflex here where I wanted to vomit. Mama. The mama is like jizzing pus <laughs> out of her arm. Same uh, arm that mom gets bit on. Mm-hmm. And she like jizzes arm pus Ooh. onto, I'm assuming a portrait of his father. So the storyline at the zoo is established that Lionel thinks that his father drowned trying to save him in like the ocean. Um, We later find out the actual truth of that. But I will say that in the photos of his father, all I could think of was John Wayne Gacy's. We flash forward to the next morning and the son is like weirdly tending to the mom's wounds who now has warts all over her face Mm -hmm. and her wound is like super pulsating and he's like dabbing it like rubbing alcohol like that's gonna fuck oh. me I know also oh. this also made me gag that yes. fucking no. wound is no, just a no. fucking I throbbing cannot. hole it had a pulse in her it arm. had a pulse it- it's a it's uvula bad. in your forearm. No, I uh, can't with that word. No. So <laughs> Ding dong. Company here. So he like rushes up. Like he excuses himself from like aiding his mother to open the front doors. And then you see these two most boring humans that have ever existed <laughs> dressed in entirely gray. Yes. Come over for like apparently a dinner party. And they don't care that he does this really terrifying march up the stairs. <laughs> to, like warn the mom he just does this like awkward jig and he's like you gotta get ready we have friends here also, the, it's it's the ladies welfare league and it's this woman mm-hmm. and her husband the mother is actively but still while actively dying attempting to do her makeup and i said that has <laughs> never been more me than <laughs> any character we've ever experienced ever that would be i will be actively super gluing skin to my face when i'm oh, no, no, no. i will be super gluing the skin to your face yes, so that you, you can be my yeah. that's love guys, yeah. takes a solid like two inches gash out of the side of her face and he's like oh baby don't worry i'm gonna super glue it back to your face they cut to the dinner scene which i'd like to mention for their fancy dinner they're having salisbury steak beans and mashed potato (laughs) they're chowing down and like having a lovely old evening but the mom is clearly askew she's dealing with some shit in her life the the female guest is kind of like over it and realizes there's something going on and meanwhile the mom is just like a ravenous zombie you know as per usual 
The husband like is demanding friend. pudding. I don't care how un uncomfortable you are. We're gonna stay for pudding. What? No pudding. So he brings out a tray, like a oh. fucking pewter tray with four custard dishes on it, and he's shoveling it away. He's fucking sniffing it like it's cocaine. Disgusting. Flapping oh. it up like a goddamn cat on catnip. Oh, and this is meanwhile... another point where I gagged. Oh, no. Oh, and only... this is when I was eating a hot dog. So... <laughs> gagged a good three four five times because i was like nope don't know don't know if i can do it uh. literally eating a hot dog <laughs> she, she like jizzes again from her arm <laughs> fucking wound also ketchup. it's not it's red. obviously ketchup mm. it's not red it's like pinky pink pink oh, yeah. pink meanwhile it, augustus gloop is over there like <laughs> Custard is oh, it's so good. So good. Oh. My wife just let me also because I weigh three hundred pounds. No, let's through. talk about fucking pudding and how much sense it doesn't fucking make. Okay, what it's is pudding? Too, Why no, is it so important no. to these goddamn cultures? It's it too, is nothing but fat and sugar. Too, so I she jizzes pudding. her pus across <laughs> the table onto fucking Augustus Gloop <laughs> custard. <laughs> And he's just like, I'm gonna eat this bloody custard. Who gives a fuck? So he he definitely up. sees it, and well, he's I like, sounds good love to me. Also, I'm gonna gag right now. Nope. <laughs> I love that his wife is like, fucking eat it, bitch. Oh. Shit. <laughs> and then meanwhile, the mom's ear. Oh, okay. Is so just falling off from her face yes. into her yeast. Yes. Yeet. Drink. Yep. And the Jesus. earring, though. That pearl, pearl earring and all. Bitch, save your earring. That looks like real pearl. pearl. Real, yes. Everyone at the table is like, this is fine. Mom goes upstairs because finally everyone's like, oh, she's a zombie. And Paquita comes over to tell Lionel that her grandmother has foreseen the dark forces that are going to come for him. And he needs to be careful. Fernando, Paquita's dog, is with her. All of a sudden, they're talking, and you hear the dog barking. Paquita and Lionel go upstairs, and fucking mom is there with something hanging out of her mouth. This, and, I swear to God. Yeah, and so Lionel pulls the, what then we clearly established to be a German Shepherd dog's tail out of mom's entire corpse. Paquita screams, your mother ate my dog. <laughs> Not all of it. Because there's intestines and shit and the tail. So, yeah. Um, also, Your Mother Ate My Dog is the Spanish title of the film. Yeah. She's more upset that he doesn't want to hang out with her than her dog being disemboweled and murdered. Whenever shit like this happens, nobody is, like, losing their goddamn mind. Yep. Everybody else is okay. like, yes, so here's what we do next. <laughs> and, like, and that's fine. They decide to um, go downstairs and they're like, mom's sick, so we need to call an ambulance. They call the nurse that was um, helping her earlier to fix the wound. Mom jumps down the stairs and starts attacking people. Lionel, like, restrains her. The nurse is starting to pack her up and the mom dies. And then the nurse is like, Lionel, your mother's dead. And don't worry, like, everybody's gonna take care of you. I'll make the arrangements and stuff like that. And as she's talking to Lionel and you're like, oh, this nurse is nice. Wait, you've only known each other for 20 minutes. The mom, like, attacks the nurse oh from behind so this like furthers the gross effects oh, which are fantastic i mean i regardless of you know how much they make us gag or how much they make emily hungry I'm <laughs> god damn it we we can't deny that these effects that are not only practical are beautifully done mm -hmm. especially for 92 which i guess is toward the end of when practical effects were mainstream and yeah. before, like, right before CGI became um, a real thing. Vera attacks uh, the nurse. Now they are both zombies. So there's a tussle between both zombies and Lionel um, while Paquita is upstairs packing Vera's bag. Eventually, as they dance, Lionel tosses both zombies into the basement. And so he 
pretends to placate Paquita when she comes down and packs the bag. He takes the bag away from Paquita and then he turns up the fucking radio during a show <laughs> and just like pretends she's not there and she's like, so I'll leave then. And he just like yep. fucking cracks up and she's like, cool, I'm gone. Bye. <laughs> The funny thing to me is in the fight with mom and the nurse, nurse's head gets knocked off her nog like a busted ass <laughs> Tiffany Elmo. And she's like, ah! <laughs> okay, okay, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. I can't handle this motion. Well, he goes to the veterinary clinic right, next, right? <laughs> he goes to see yeah. what clearly an ex-Nazi uh-huh. gives a dead monkey a hand job with a Q-tip. <laughs> and- or and like literally it's like poke and this guy he goes in this guy's like poking the genital area of a deceased monkey with a bunch of q-tips or something it is not fun and <laughs> he asks for tranquilizers and then as the the very clearly german doctor who's crying about being abandoned by his people in new zealand is wearing a spastica on his arm under his torn uh vet v- monkey rapist vet suit peter jackson what um and then we have lionel's back in the house and he is attempting he has procured animal tranquilizers and he is dressed in full um what i like to call at home combat gear diy pp and he goes in to sedate mom who is full zomb and um and nurse and yeah uh, it is it is very the method in which he chooses to inject them with tranquilizer is by putting it like up their nose that was the first time that i really thought he looked like bruce campbell yeah in this scene was when he was like shoving the needle up his mom's nose and he just like has such a bruce campbell-y look to him yeah um but it's perfect i mean he's in he's in a basement or a cellar and he's just like fucking injecting shit it's perfect well Uh, and honestly i don't know what it was about him injecting stuff in people's eyes or up people's nose that gave me comfort but it was like okay that's where things go that's where mm-hmm. things are I, i'm i'm genuinely hoping that the mom looking all jacked up was somehow the inspiration for Gollum. <laughs> yeah. but kita is talking to her grandma basically saying you're marked and as that is happening the zombies escape from the basement our hero maybe Yes. Is getting flashbacks of a drowning scene. Yep. So he's seeing a blonde woman being drowned at some point, and he keeps waking up from these terrible nightmares, like fucking freaked out. And then we jump back to this bodega pharmacy that Paquita, Paquita works in. He's like having a fucking time with it, and they decide to visit the bruja. So oh. he decides to get a reading, a tarot reading from this bruja, and she says that he has been marked by death. She then gives him an amulet, which is this star snowflake looking and half moon amulet with a garnet in the middle. And she's like, this will bring you luck. So he's like, no, it's fine. It's not a big deal. Like he's still trying to play it off like nothing's happening in his life. And then (laughs) meanwhile, his zombie mother is getting hit by a tram, which is number 238. I don't know if that's if that's important, but they really take a moment to like show you that it's tram number 238. Here's the one thing I brought up up with the number 238 um, as it refers to um, Australian history. So in 1934, Australia beat England in cricket uh, by 238 runs. (gasps) What? If that's the thing, that's the coolest tidbit ever. So this tram hits her. She gets yeeted into the shop. So he (laughs) then sticks her in the nose once more with this tranquilizer (laughs) that he's just been, like, casually carrying around. And he's like, oh, well, I guess my mom's dead now, even though he knows (laughs) that that's, like, not possible. (laughs) So we cut to the funeral of the mother, and people are, like, standing around the grave, and there's the priest there, which is wearing the worst wig known to fucking man. That frock is lit, though. Lit. His uncle, is it Les? I called him Fat Elvis Fucker. Fat yeah, Elvis Fucker's there. Yeah, no, and his name Les. is Les, and he's a fucking lech. Clear hair piece happening. Meanwhile, Lionel decides to, like, come back to his mother, which because he knows at this point that she can't really be dead, that she's a member of the undead. So he comes to bring oh. her a syringe of uh, sedation. Tranquilizer. Or whatever it may be. Tranquil- thank you. He gets, like, a t- gallon of tranquilizer. Just, like... <laughs> Like, the vet is just like, oh, you want tranquilizer? Here's a fucking bucket. 
this man for a vat of tranquilizers. I mean, he this is a full growler of tranquilizers. <laughs> like, it's a the fucking embalming, craft brewery. But honestly, the embalming fluid, as she's being embalmed, I mean, this was scene number two of practical, oh, practically gross. Gorgeous. But Which it, Peter Jackson uh, is the assistant in this in this scene. Yes, and so there's like some huge like Dr. Seuss yes. embalming machine <laughs> yes. or something. I do not like green eggs. Hello, bats and babes. I'm here today to tell you about some incredible black-owned beauty brands and witchy and intentional shops that you can find on Etsy. Please go support, foster, and promote these incredible makers and creators. So we have Seven Gems Shop, Ignite Your Peace, 111 Candles, Love Lex Customs, The Melanin Moon, Lalu's Roots and Conjure, Harlem Roots, Coco Meditation, Just Queen In with a K, The Oracle's Haven, The Divine Altar, Goodies for Goddesses, Grabs for the Gods, The Kitchen Chemist, Spellbag Alley, Spiritual is Store, Luna and Lumi, Sunflowers and Honeycombs, Amethyst Goddess Soul, Skin Ritual Shop, Lalu's Treasure, Purple Door Grigri, Seek the Wadflowers, Modern Divination, Nana's Garden, in Texas, Piscean Spirituality, Heritage Apothecary, Hey You, Get Off My Lawn, Scrubtious Inc., Star Magic by Ashley, Smoke and Smudge, Hello Wildflower with three R's, As You Once Were Shop, The Oracle's Apothecary, The Roaming Botanical, and Little Crystal Galaxy. So once again, check out all these incredible Black-owned shops on Etsy. Support your Black creators. Black Lives Matter. He has a sandwich, like, perched on her body, like, the archetype of, like, the weird morgue dude. And, and she starts just, yes. like, spewing Nickelodeon sex slime from yep. em- every orifice. And then Costco John Walker yep. comes in, and he's like, this cannot happen. This is a funeral. This can't happen at all. <laughs> so uh, Peter Jackson starts eating the sandwich. The mortician just, like, casually pops her eyeballs. Yes. Back into her <laughs> So then we cut back to the funeral, and this priest is on a goddamn mission, and Lionel is, like, <laughs> low-key trying to hide his dead zombie, but, like, not dead mom back in a casket <laughs> and, while and the full sermon is happening. <laughs> and, and I like how the theme of the sermon is the sanctity of motherhood. I know! <laughs> And also, I would like to mention that his, like, girlfriend is front row at the funeral, which speaks to what kind of human person she was. Yeah. Only, only because fucking Les the Funkle was creeping up on her, so she had to move up several rows because he was trying to molest her. That's so, a like, she wouldn't, yeah, she wouldn't have been there if he weren't such a fucking creep. There were, like, a weird exchange of events. Um, our protagonist ends up spooning his dead mom yep. at her funeral, <laughs> covered in Nickelodeon it? slime. Who doesn't do that? If you guys um, so- did that to your moms at their funeral, I would be like, all right, five more seconds. Oh, and no. then, um... I mean, I do it to you guys, but like... This is the scene where I said earlier the vandals were drinking fireball in the cemetery. And I was judgmental at first until I realized almost immediately that was us. Oh, and, yeah. And then I they're, said, they're the what? Jets. Genuinely, I think this is the campiest scene of the whole movie. <gasps> this Get is my favorite thing. fucking scene of the entire goddamn movie. Do it, okay. do it. So, <laughs> so Lionel decides he really needs to dig up his dead mother. Of because course. this blows my mind. Why the fuck are you digging up your dead mother? You are finally done with her. I don't care if you thought she was a zombie and like you need to do whatever the fuck. She's gone. She's done. Just live your life. Go get with Paquita. You don't want Paquita because you want your mother. Fuck yeah. you. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so he is there in the graveyard at dark to dig up her shit and the jets there are like three of them and they come up behind him they're all drinking they've got those greaser haircuts and they're like what are you doing buddy you trying to dig up some shit they start a scuffle and the priest for some reason the priest lives like at the top of the graveyard and he hears the scuffle so he goes down to break up the fight that's actually true by the way graveyards are overseen by a priest cemeteries are not the the greasers are like what are you gonna do (laughs) the 
priest is like, he's like, I fight for the Lord. No, I kick ass for the Lord. Yes, thank you. Yes, I kick yes. ass for the Lord. And this motherfucker turns out the most amazing moves on these fucking jets. He does all the kung fu and the kicks and the chops. And just as he's really getting into it, Vera comes up out of the grave, attacks some of the greasers. And so the greasers start becoming zombies and they're attacking the priest as zombies. Not only is this fucking priest tearing it up, their kappas are detained, but then the zombies turn on him and somehow or another he ends up flying in the air and he is impaled by a statue in the graveyard and it is so beautiful i like i love this fucking scene so much it is so kitschy Uh and gross and dumb and it's beautiful with this film you go from hit to hit to hit Mm -hmm. next scene as funny as the past scene he's fucking making lionel's making father zombie nurse zombie mom zombie greaser zombie jet zombie um he's making them like runny eggs filled with fucking tranquilizers they're enjoying a nice breakfast. And they're loving it. I mean, I'll be honest, I love eggs, but not like this. The nurse's zombie's head falls off while she's eating her eggs, and he, like, feeds the hole in her neck. This and, shit. Ugh. I swear to God. Does this? Did you almost do it at this scene? Did you gag? Yes. So Lionel leaves them because Ugh. Les comes to the door and Les forces his way in because Les is a fucking lech. And eventually they hear fucking moaning coming from the dining room. And Les is like, oh, so you're listening to porn. Lionel's trying to deny it when the best route there is just be like, yeah, sorry, I'm wanking. I'm breathing. This is my process. Uncle Great. Les, I see you've come across your uncle old stag films. Is this the one with the donkey and the chambermaid. (laughs) Fucking hell. Continue. Les is like, yeah, take your time. Grieve. Do what you need to do. Um, That's what makes the uncle go away. (laughs) Um, So Lionel goes back in and the fucking priests and nurse zombies are fucking and Lionel has to pull them off of each other. The nurse ends up yanking off part of the priest's face. Yep. Lionel's just like, fuck this. He puts everybody down in the basement, straps everyone to chairs or whatever, and somehow the nurse ends up on the floor. And we uh-huh. see that her stomach is expanding and contracting. Okay, what is happening no, there? We know that she is about to give birth to what will become the funniest side character in this film shortly. Honestly, you guys, this fucking thing, I was so disturbed. It fucking is. piece of shit. Okay. It's, an, it's a it. garbage pail kid. It is it like is. Dawn of the Dead. This baby's hiding in a fucking toaster or some shit. <laughs> So Lionel comes down the stairs of the basement and he just sees these fucking nasty, like super wet feet. (laughs) And he decides to pull on the feet. First of all, you see the feet, you run, you go to another planet and you're done. The movie's over. But he pulls on the feet and he discovers there is a fucking child in there. Like Cabbage Patch and and Garbage Pail meets Chernobyl. It's just bad. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. That is exactly what it is. So bad. And this fucking thing is feral from the start. Lionel, this guy already is is keeping captive of a multitude of zombies that are doing nothing but hurting his life. He then decides to get a lovely stroller and take zombie baby to the park. A full yeah. pram, and he's like, let me cover it. Also, where did this come from? Wire. Where did the baby clothes come from? Did you go to Kids R Us before this? What is happening? Okay, I did grow up with a weird creepy pram in the attic. I assumed that was normal. <laughs> the zombie babies of the stroller in the pram. The carriage flies and the baby escapes. The baby is going towards children where he's going to clearly murder them. And Lionel catches him and begins to fucking punch and throw him around and slam him very comically. Like the Monty Python scene where John Cleese beats his car. Drunk guy in the corner like, yeah! And then the moms are watching him. And Nobody's he- doing anything. Nobody is stopping this. Everybody's like, wow, what a bad dad. So I, yeah. I said earlier that there was a lot of Costco versions in this film. So this is my Costco Chucky. Fajita goes on a date 
with the other the person that in the beginning of the movie there's like this handsome guy he might be like a pharmacist clearly a huge douchebag that she goes on a date with and lionel walks past her and um as he's leaving from beating the shit out of zombie child the door is open to the cellar where all the zombies are and all of a sudden uncle les is there and he has found them and he is threatening to call the police unless lionel gives him access to the house and the money in the will all of a sudden out of nowhere lionel's like let me just give up everything to protect a bunch of zombies so that's cool he does two minutes later huge house party you know what is never good in a horror movie a huge house party Lionel is the gefilte fish of this <laughs> film. Nothing there of substance. It's not good. It doesn't look great. It doesn't taste good, probably. Kita's there. Uncle Les is, like, essentially molesting her. It is disgusting. She knocks his wig off. Yep. He threatens her. He throws her into the basement. She sees the zombies that Grandma said, death surrounds you. And he said, they're not dead exactly. They're just sort of rotting. He sort of thinks this is his fault. She finally convinces him that he needs to poison his mom because she said, this is not your mom. So she gets what he sees on the cabinet to be poison. He puts it in them and then he buries them in the cellar. Uh, Lionel goes up with Paquita, finally punches Les. Lionel is tossed in the basement. And uh, fucking Les drags Paquita away, assumingly to rape her, because he has been kneed in the crotch at this point at least five times. While Lionel is down in the basement, Lionel discovers the poison was actually animal stimulant, and then the zombies rise again. What a mix-up. They're going to put on the most fucking epic remake of Thriller. So the zombies rise again. They begin tearing apart the partygoers. And now the house is filled with zombies. Lionel tells Paquita to run while he staves off the zombies. Now it is gore galore everywhere. Yes. Lionel tries to run away, but is running in place in a puddle of blood, which is a band name. Running in roller skates. Puddle of blood. Also, I love that he reminds me the way he jumps on the heads of the zombies is like Indiana Jones in the yes. first Indiana Jones where he's just like stepping yeah. on the rocks like the penitent man, the penitent man. Like, there is a really cool uh, special effect where basically someone's head skin is pulled off and all uh, the, yes. the eyes and the lips and the meat. And I, that's actually, I think, an iconic image that's featured yeah. in this. Um, in the in the cover art for this in different cover arts not the original one but practical effects that i really love in this the first is when the the one party goer gets his rib cage yes. entirely yes. ripped out oh my and the God. second is when the other party goer gets his face just like it's as if they they just like basically tried to do a facelift and cut off his skin where his jawline met and just oh, like yeah. pulled it off like a fucking mask in a scooby-doo oh, yeah. episode this is what you've been waiting for yeah that's is this yes. bodies somehow kind of become made out of play where you yeah. can just kind of like inject your hand in and pull out whatever organ you make. Also, see. that's what I fucking love. That yeah. that fucking scene where the guy comes through and fucking puts his hand through the woman's uh, mouth, through the back yes. of her head. That yes. I was like, yes, yeah. that was amazing. Oh. And and honestly, you know what this is? This is the 100 ways to die. Every we get- death is unique. Akita and another woman who survives for a very brief period of time. Oh, the rockabilly uh, girl. Yeah. Yeah, the light Rita. bulb through the light bulb through the back of the head lights up. The I house. want that lamp. There's entrails all over the goddamn place. And, well, and to... somehow all these entrails become sentient themselves. Yes. Yes. And then also there's a part where everybody picks up legs to fight with them and yeah. I say legs yeah. fight. No. <laughs> these are these are airbud paws. Airbud paws. <laughs> airbud paws. So the rule of thumb, these zombies are purely venomous. So like obviously our our hero has consumed a lot of Yes venom from these zombies even like in the the initial scene where she was like jizzing pus into other people's custard they Uh, ate it and they were unaffected right because it they bit it it didn't bite them so this movie really really relies on that very heavily of you don't get infected by consuming it you only get affected by it consuming you 
after the baby, my second favorite character in this film is the 2D intestines. There is a little pair of intestines that are very cute that I would want as a stuffed animal. They chase Lionel around and basically try to give him like a hand job through his pants, kind of. Yes! And, um, so I love that. And Uncle Les is chopping up all the zombies kind of cool like when you come back to that scene and he's just surrounded by a bunch of body parts you also have rita who is the costco version of katie perry who has been bitten but is like a slow burn for some reason pachita is obsessed with her yeah she just i get it it. i mean she's cute peter jackson loves a good nut punch he loves oh my god a good nut punch if there no are at five. least 20 nut punches in this movie, somebody, I owe mm-hmm. someone money. Mom is the Sumatran rat now. She has completely transformed. Comes out of the basement. You see the claws, which look, I don't know where she got them done, but I would like that kind of length. She comes out of the ground. Paquita has, has been bitten from what we understand. Lionel has taken a lawnmower to all of the remaining zombies in the lobby, in the uh, in the entryway of his house. Um, as Emily said at the beginning, there was so much blood that this house possibly could not have been used again, which is really cool. <laughs> the lady that is the Costco version of the pink lady and the baby crawls out of this lady's fucking head. And I think that is the inspiration for the cover art. The baby is g- giggling like a dolphin and that's terrifying. <laughs> and we cut to Lionel's murdered all the all the following uh, zombies in the lobby. The 2D intestines are following following him up into the attic. Here comes mom. Yeah. (laughs) They're all like, oh no, the only thing left is the mom. And fucking Vera knows when her cue is a call-in. So Vera uh, appears with all the titties. (laughs) She has the most ginormous titties. She crawls to the top of the roof where Lionel and Paquita are. Her, I don't know if it's her vagina or her uterus or her stomach, but something opens up and she's like, come to mama. (laughs) So Paquita like decides to try and just like jump off the roof, which like, yeah, of course. But Lionel's just like, oh no, but my mother and her uterus. (laughs) And he is um, consumed by the mama pussy. Meanwhile, Vera is like simultaneously like reverse birthing her son while trying to get Paquita off the roof been real and and yeah and just as vera is about to push paquita's grip off the roof lionel somehow grows balls and rips vera apart to crawl out mama goes a flying somehow i don't know why that's the last straw in which she dies as paquita is being possibly yeeted off the roof lionel confronts mother And you see a montage of him as a little boy watching mom fucking drown dad and his mistress. Oy vey. You don't need an excuse to kill her at this point. Lionel and Paquita run away down the hill with their amulet. They're making out and the house is in flames and somehow this fucking fucking baby. What what is the deal with this goddamn demon baby? I don't know. (laughs) It's still alive and it's crying in those flames. And I'm like, die, baby, die. What's cool about them leaving the baby is that I waited until after the credits because I'm actively concerned the baby take it out and like fucking bite somebody. Truly, mom just falls in through the ceiling. She doesn't really get killed per se. So you never get that satisfactory murder. No. So you're under the impression that maybe they ain't dead. But here you go, <laughs> leaving it open for a number two. Thank the Lord above and below that nobody did that. So <laughs> that bitch throws away his amulet. Hold oh, on to it. it. And he's now. like, nah, I don't need it. Like, what, what, what are yeah, you doing? What, what, what? Also, I didn't puke and I watched this. And the words we just uttered, I don't think we will ever speak again. The kind <laughs> of words in the order in which we spoke them. What? I think we got to do lawnmowers. Yeah. I think that's yeah. what we have to do. Yeah, out of ten lawnmowers, I'm gonna give it a, I'm gonna give it a six because you know what? It's very, it's a cult classic. I have never seen it. I will likely not watch it again. But you know what? I will do. I'll tell everybody I know to watch it because I want them to share in this burden I have now of seeing someone eat (laughs) pas bolognese and an ear. I'm gonna give it a six. I'm also gonna give it a six because clearly it takes the B horror 
and it really made you work for that. You got to the end of the movie. It was fucked. It was weird. There's a lot of really kooky ass fun facts. I'm going to have to agree with the six. I think purely on gore alone and the, you know, at the, in the lawnmower scene, they were pumping out five gallons of blood per second. Um, yeah. It, and it, it, it clearly broke records in terms of gore and blood use. And just, I think the effects were absolutely gorgeous. The fact that it made me gag so many times and made us so uncomfortable speaks volumes on the effects work and the practical um, work there done. I think it definitely did pave the way for things like Rob Zombie, for Saw, for, yeah, uh, things to come. It's very valuable that we saw this. It really brought a lot of shit forward. This is what I'm here for. This is B movie. Like, this is it. Take a shit on this movie. Girl. Do it. I give this movie a three because I'm broken. I wasn't disturbed by it. It has to, well, it's not even that it has to scare me. I think that a lot of the cred for this movie comes from it being so gory. And I appreciate that. But as a 29 year old human person, I was introduced to trauma films before oh. I was introduced to, to Dead Alive. So I think that I lost that like novelty because I was used to seeing this kind of like almost slapstick horror before. Does it deserve that credibility? Probably. I love Peter Jackson. I am a huge Lord of the Rings nerd if we haven't put that together already yet. Like in Hungary, which this was like wildly popular in, the title translates to cool because brain and dead together yes! in Hungary what? mean cool. No. So like from a marketing perspective, this is just like fucking shit the bed on all accounts. God it was damn. problematic racially. It was problematic like I did not pass the Bechdel test. I think that it was advertised in a way that it did not live up to. And I think that if your hook is that it's gory, the gore can't be kitschy. Think about the time period when oh, this yeah. was made. The goriest thing that had come out was what? Friday the 13th? Like, but I think Friday the 13th was smarter about it. I feel the same way about gore that I do about jump scares. If you culminate an environment in which I can appreciate it, then I will. But if it's just for the sake of being there, then I don't fucking care. I if, ate a hot dog while watching this movie. If I may, <laughs> goriest movies ever. Guess what's number one? Just this, a smattering of the ones after that. Bad Taste is number eight. Guinea Pig, Flower of Flesh and Blood. Then we got Tater City. Then we got Poultrygeist, Night of the Chicken Dead. Nice. Then we have Planet Terror. That's a good one. Hatchet. Hatchet 2 Ooh. and Deathgasm, which I added to our list. I think that I'm left wanting and what I think the potential of this movie could have been. Arguably, when your favorite thing about a movie is a bunch <laughs> of 2D organs that are flopping around. <laughs> but I'm here for it. This was like a, a juggalo convention in hell. Not to hate on the <laughs> But <laughs> so needless to say, uh, I'm still happy Blaine picked it. What I recommend for this film, if you're if you find yourself in the camp of like, this isn't super my cup of tea, I highly recommend that you watch the best of real. It's it's just two hours of my life. I'm never going to get back. 